Hey everybody, it is the Initiative Project Podcast. It is Wednesday. I'm off work. Woohoo! Yeah, great stuff. So, <laughs> um, usually we start with how your week's been going or how your month, because it seems like we haven't talked in almost a month. Well, yeah, I know, because we're recording. 50 a bunch of episodes one, at once, one day. at one time, yeah. and you know I tend to write books and stuff. You yeah, know, you like do. my notes are so long, they're so, de- super you know, detailed. They are detailed. All but right, that's so just how I am. Kelly, what have you been doing past month? Oh my gosh! Well, soccer started, um, but I also have some big news coming up. I am opening up a brick and mortar in Medina. So what, what, a brick and mortar what? Well, I'm not going to say anything yet because it's like not a done deal. Oh, okay. So, so you can tell me off it. air. Yes, I will tell you off yes. air, but we're going to be talking a little bit more about this uh, in future podcasts because I'm so super excited. So, so what is it? Is it going to be in Medina? Yes. Oh, okay. That's yes. good. Cool. And it's going to be on the square. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's only so many buildings that are vacant, so I can kind of figure out. No, not really. <laughs> All right. How so, about you? Oh, uh, uh, well, I started a new job, quit my old job, and it's fantastic. I got today off for a Jewish holiday. Yom Kippur was started last night. So what? What is? I mean, can you explain Yom Kippur? <clears throat> because I mean, honestly, I have no so, clue, and a lot of people don't about Jewish holidays. Yeah, it's like the beginning of the new year. Um, you um, you fast for twenty four hours. So from last night to tonight, you fast. And it's more of like reflection time. So you haven't eaten anything? Since yesterday. Okay. So like last night, like after dinner. Okay. Like six, I think. But yeah, you don't eat for 24 hours and you just kind of reflect on the past year. You know, what sins have you committed? You know, what do you need to repent of? Stuff like that. So do you, you actually take the time to yeah. tell out to do that? Yeah. yeah we, we, you have a, we had a service last night. Um, we didn't get home until almost nine. And, um, so you do that, you have like readings and stuff, but it's more of like a reflective time. Right. But it's good. Um, you know, cause I have a day off, which is awesome, but it's, you know, it's not just time to just have a day off. It's more of a reflection and everything else. So, the, but besides that, um, start a new job. It's going really well. It's only been two weeks. Um, so who knows what's going to happen, but very motivated to, uh, kick things off there right and um you know help my my rabbi because he actually owns a company to uh destroy people in his industry by taking all their business sweet that's my goal (laughs) sweet all right so with halloween coming up and i do not celebrate halloween do you celebrate halloween well you can't even trick or treat around here i mean I don't know. Halloween's not like a religious holiday. No, or anything. I'm just saying. So, like, I mean, do you go but, out and do that stuff? Well, or? yeah. I mean, so when your kiddo gets older, are you guys? You're not going to do Halloween at no, all? No. Yeah, I haven't done it since I was. Why though? Do you have like a reason why you won't just, do it? Uh, it's just like kind of like demonic and stuff, and there's like a bunch of like we if you if you notice like around Halloween, people get like really crazy. Like there's people like. Animal shelters from I don't know if this is hearsay or not. They will not give out black cats during that oh, time. Oh, yeah, I've heard that because before. people are like sacrificing yeah. cats and doing like weird shit. So I mean, there's all there's weird people that and, do um, stuff all the time. But. And it's just like the symbology about like behind it. And we're just, yeah. and we I've I did it one time in grade school years ago. That was before I even I think I was like five or six and I dressed up as Batman and that was the last time I remember doing anything. Okay. Um, and then now we just, (laughs) there's nothing, there's no, there's only bad things behind it that, you know, from my, my perspective, obviously we have different perspectives, but I I just don't, there's nothing, nothing good comes from that. I mean, people are just, people are crazy. Oh, I know they are. And it's just like, do I want to go out and, you know, do that and be exposed to that? Not really. You know, I respect that, you know, you are actually, you actually follow your religion and, uh, you know, you, um, I mean, you go to church, you, you actually believe in it and you, you follow it. I'm not a religious person. And so I see Halloween as uh, more of a, a cultural thing, um, that, you know, American sure. kids tend to do. And so, 
Um, so yeah, no, we, we do the Halloween thing. The kid gets dressed up and whatever, and, and we go out and we beg for candy door to door. Yeah, but you gotta, you gotta like walk a country mile to get to one house. I, well, we don't do it here. Yeah. We go up to Brook Park oh, that's with smart. grandma. Well, that's yes. smart. That's the, the, smart. the houses are close together. Nobody, you don't, uh, there's no trick or treating here. So like well, we yeah. don't get people. Yeah. Like which, we're, where we live in Spencer, we did, but did you? you just okay. have a light off and you just don't go there. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so yeah, with Halloween coming up, you know, there's death by sugar because <laughs> that's what we're going to cover today. And Kelly's oh, going to storm off the set. I am going to, I'm going to freak out somebody. here in a second. <laughs> so, because the notes I'm looking at saying that sugar can be as addictive as cocaine, and and I have some stuff to say about that's good this. because this is a discussion. That's right. And it I is just a I just pulled this off the internet, and I'm like, okay, this looks good. We're gonna talk about that. That's fine. So sugar can be as addictive as cocaine. Now, as far as addictive quality, I don't know. It's probably I don't know. Like I'm addicted to monsters, and I've I have I have two days clean. Two days. Yeah. Oh. Two days. Oh, so you're talking about the drink, monster yeah, drinks. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, Not okay. Not like okay. monsters, like I go right. and hunt them. Yeah, like, uh, what's that? That. I thought maybe movie. a video game or something. No. Okay. Well, there, yeah, is no, a, was... there is a movie. There is a video game called <laughs> I was that. Like, but... what in the heck is he talking yeah, about? Yeah. So, like, I mean, I, anything can be addictive, right? Yes. So... so here's here's the deal. There has got to be a difference between cocaine and sugar because if sugar were as addictive as cocaine, first of all. Mm-hmm. Everybody would be addicted to sugar. She's speaking from experience, are you not? What? Cocaine? Usually? No, I'm not <laughs> speaking. But here's what I understand about things like heroin and cocaine. If you try it one time, you're pretty much addicted to it. Oh, yeah. So there's some difference in how cocaine affects the brain versus sugar because not everybody is addicted to sugar. And I think it might, because we actually, I can't remember what I took. Something in college or something. Who knows? There, People are actually predispossessed. Or if like your your mother is an alcoholic or father yes. an alcoholic, you're more likely to be an alcoholic. That's true. There's a genetic component to it, um, for sure. It, it, you know, the addiction runs in families. So whether it's genetic or whether it's a learned uh, trait, you know, n- nature versus nurture, it's probably a little bit of both. Right. But still, you know, to to call sugar as addictive as cocaine is really, and I think it takes the power away from people who believe they are addicted to food or addicted to sugar. And and I'm going to be honest, I know I'm going to piss some people off here by saying that sugar is not addictive and it's not as addictive as cocaine. Um, but I used to believe that sugar was addictive. I used to think that I was addicted to sugar and I used to run programs for, you know, detox from sugar and right. all this, you know, this bullshit. But the things I've learned since then are that you know I think I think it's wrong and there's a couple of reasons that that I feel that way and and what I've learned in some of the research and the first thing is is that I want to make the um, I want to make the distinction here that a lot of things light up the same centers, the pleasure centers of our brain. So for example, looking at photos of your own child, your baby, it lights up that same pleasure center as cocaine. Oh, okay. Um, so that's probably why they're getting that as addictive yes, as cocaine. Yes, it lights up the pleasure center of the brain, So, which is also what cocaine lights up. So nobody is out there saying that looking at pictures of your child is addictive. No. So again, there's a lot, when you go outside and you play sports or you laugh with somebody or you hug somebody or you have sex, it lights up the same pleasure centers in your brain as cocaine or heroin or these addictive drugs. So there's got to be a difference because again, most people are not addicted to looking at pictures of their babies or, um, or, you know, going outside and running around and playing a sport or, you know, you just don't hear about stuff like that. No, no, not really. The other thing that I find really interesting in the research, and I heard this through someone through someone else. So I've been taking this intuitive eating uh, these courses to okay. be certified as yep. a as a pro instructor. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
she has sent us, uh, those of us in the class, a whole bunch of research studies. And I'll be honest, I have not read through them all because it's... Are they like pretty in depth? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's she sends the entire research study. So all the way from the abstract, all the way through the methodology. Oh, yeah. It, they're very hard to read. Yeah, it sounds boring. But... Of all of the stuff she sent me, what I've noticed the most about the studies in rats and humans that are quote unquote addicted to food or addicted to sugar, the rats and the humans that are shown to be addictive were, um, they're food restricted. Okay. So she, what she, the point that she makes in her class is I want to know why is the control group of rats not addicted to sugar? Why are they not binging on sugar? Turns out because they're not food restricted. Right, right. So is it is it the sugar that's addictive or is it the fact that I can't in these have studies, it. right, they're they're restricting and, and they're calorie restricted. So they're not just restricted in, sh- in sugar, mm-hmm. they're calorie restricted. So they're hungry. So of course, when they are given sugar, they're going to experience this overcompensation, this overfeeding response. So again, are these studies that are showing that sugar is addictive in rats and humans, are they really painting the whole picture? Or are we dealing with people who are are dieting and trying to eliminate all sugar? And are we dealing with people who are just hungry? Right. <laughs> you right. know, and rats that are super hungry. So it almost it almost make it wouldn't make any sense to even do studies like that then. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> it doesn't make if sense. That's, if that if the biggest issue is restricting that right. we find out, then what's the point of doing the studies? It's a and, confounding anyways. factor. Or maybe you just have, okay, you know, control group can eat whatever they want, and then the other group has a choice between, you know, these sugary foods and then obviously these other choices, and right. let's see which one they gear and towards. Here's, and again, so the, the fact that all of these studies are done in food-restricted mice and rats and people is it's a confounding factor, and and in my own personal life, this is what I know about my own past history with sugar is that the more I tried to restrict sugar, the more I would binge on it, right? And I would eat abnormal amounts. And now that I've gone through the mindful eating process and the intuitive eating process, I can eat normal amounts of sugar, yeah, and not you know I'm not addicted to it. I thought I was, and and I never was. It was the restriction of calories and the emotional restriction of the things that I wanted to eat that caused me to overeat those things. So it's you think it's with the restriction and the mental state yes. probably affecting everything. Yes, I think it's calorie restriction being a big one because if you're calorie restricted, your body's constantly sending signals, you know, to it wants you to eat, you're hungry, you're hungry. Right. And you're going to have a, an over uh, you're going to overcompensate by overeating whether it's sugar or anything else. But, but then I also think there's the mental emotional side of it where if you say to yourself, I can't have that immediately, it's like saying, don't think about pink elephants. What are you thinking about right now? I don't know. Boogers. <laughs> no, you have a big fat pink elephant in your brain right now. I know you do. I don't know. Well, my <laughs> wife asked me, what am I thinking about? I'll just say nothing. And she's like, you're lying. I'm like, no, I'm literally have a blank. Nothing. So... <laughs> It's just that awesome thing that men have. Right. They think about nothing a They lot. can just, they can turn it off like a switch. It's great. Yeah. It's great. So we'll kind of go over this uh, article, you know, she'll probably stab I'm not going to, okay. So here's, okay. here's the deal. I'm not saying that sugar is good for you. I just want to make the point that so many people right now think that sugar is addictive and, and it's just, it's not addictive. Um, and sometimes w- the diets that we all tend to go on and, you know, these crazy things that we do, I, I think make our issues worse. So, but, of, so what are one of the diets that restrict sugar a lot? Well, well you're on one. Keto does. Keto. I feel better paleo. doing that. Than... Absolutely. Because if you're eating a lot of sugar, if you're <clears throat> eating a lot of sugar laden foods, sugar is absolutely associated with blood sugar swings. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it can cause diabetes if you're eating too much sugar, it can, um, it causes inflammation in your body. So like I notice when I eat too much sugar that my joints tend to swell and they feel stiff and and they hurt. So sugar can definitely have 
uh, deleterious effects on the body. And yeah. I think we're going to sort of run through some of these. I'm, I'm not denying that. Mm-hmm. I just think that, you know, sometimes when people try to be overly restrictive, that it, it creates more problems than it solves. So like, I yes, think keto, keto is good. Well, well, let's put it this way. The modified is better because you can actually eat so many carbs in a day. But I think that if it, are you really in ketosis though? If you're eating, you are in your, well, it depends. Cause I mean, you're not in that, uh, what is it called? Clinical ketosis right. where you can, you can't eat any carbs. Right. This is modified to where okay. you're in ketosis and you're out, but it's not to where it's more of, I think <clears throat> to where you can eat whatever you want, but you just try to limit your carb consumption so much. So do I really want that bowl of ice cream? If I could eat something else, probably not. I could probably wait on that if I really want it. Or maybe I'll just, you know, budget it in for okay. the day. So right. it's, I, I know like clinical ketosis is super strict and you can't eat over like, I don't know, like 20 grams, I think. Right. I, I don't know exactly. Yeah. I think I want to say that. Um, it's pretty low. Yes. It's very low. I think it's got to be below 25 and for certain people mm-hmm. it has to be even lower. Yeah. And I think, I know there's one guy on YouTube, he said he's in ketosis and he eats a hundred grams a day. It's right. because just how his body metabolizes it. I know I've heard some athletes say that because they exercise so much, they're able to maintain ketosis with a higher level of carbohydrates. And that might so, be what it is. It's right. just maybe keto is kind of just that way to help you restrict it to where you're not going out and right. you know, getting a large Dairy Queen blizzard like I did like four times this week. <laughs> Last week, not this week. Only had it once. What's happening there? Oh, I don't know. What day was that? That how was, many? Wait, how many days? Four? No, that was last week. Today's Monday. No, today's Wednesday. Today's Monday Wednesday. was like, what did I do? Oh, Monday. I was bored on my mind at work because I got all my stuff done and I had nothing to do. And right. I was literally just sitting on a computer, like trying to do this, some other stuff because like training and whatnot. And I'm just like, I'm going to stab my eyes out. <laughs> Cause I'm so bored. Uh-huh. So it was just, I think it was, I had like a, I just had a migraine cause I just wasn't busy. I wasn't doing anything. So I'm like, I'm getting a blizzard <laughs> and I don't care. Did you get a small, medium, or large? <laughs> small? Well, that's not even a size. It's large or nothing. Okay. So see, this is my, this is my point exactly. When you restrict, <laughs> When you go to have that food, nothing but as much as you can possibly shovel in is going to do. So, yeah. well, I think it was this, also because my ment. I was just like, I was like, I'm bored at work. I'm so bored. I got a headache. Let's you had just an get emotional look. thing going yeah, on. Yeah, and then like t- yesterday, I was busy all day. I was fine. Today, right. I'll be fine. Tomorrow, I'll probably be fine. Right. So, right. <clears throat> right. It's just like I have to be busy at work all the time, or I'm like, my brain is like cannibalizing itself. Right. Because I feel like I have nothing to do. All right. So tell us a little bit, TJ, about how sugar damages your health. Damages your body. Okay. So we all, well, my mother told me, and this could be false, but it says it's number one. It weakens the immune system. Now, she told me for every, I think it was like every two tablespoons, it shuts down your immune system for up to six hours. Now, have you heard that or not? So I've heard that sugar impacts your gut microbiome, so it can certainly impact your immune system, but I have not heard or seen any study. And, and, and like again, the, this is well, just... Well, how would you measure that? Your immune yeah, system shut down? Okay, so let's let's say it doesn't shut down for six hours. Let's say it shuts down for two. That's my... like. Where did that information about six hours come from and how are they measuring that? Like, are they taking fecal samples to... How to, much time can you poop? How many times are you going to poop in six well, hours? Well, I mean, like, are they... Uh, yeah, are they how doing some sort of internal sample or something? Because yeah. that's my only question. Unless is, they measure the white blood cell count. Right. If it goes down and it goes back up to normal. Because, yeah, I, I yeah, I, I don't know how they would do that. So, I mean, I'd be interested to read a study or something that showed that, but I'm not, I'm, I'm honestly not sure on that one. So, let's just say it shuts it down for like two hours because that's, you know, the lower end or even an hour. Right. Okay. So, if you're eating sugar, it shuts it down for an hour. And if you're compounding that over the day, you know, let's say every meal you're eating some type of like cornflakes or, you know, right. lunch you're eating crap. Crap. So... Three hours out of the day, your immune system shut down, and then 
you happen to go to work that day and there's someone with a stuffy nose, maybe the chances of you getting that cold is a little bit higher. Than Here's normal. my other question, though, is that people who tend to eat shit in general, yeah. um, they uh, this is a confounding factor. Is it the sugar or is it the fact that people who eat a lot of sugar just tend to eat really crappy and they don't get the host of vitamins and minerals that they need That's to begin true. with? So again, like, is it, you know, is it the chicken or the egg? So I do believe that sugar probably causes gut microbiome imbalances. I know that people who eat a lot of sugar can have an overgrowth of yeast in their digestive tracts. Like, um, women who, um, eat a lot of sugar, sometimes they'll have recurring yeast infections, which, Mm. you know, sucks. And they don't realize it's because of all the sugar that they eat and the processed food. So it absolutely can affect your immune system. Um, but again, you know, whether or not eating, sh- eating some sugar during the day is going to shut down your immune system and that's the cause for you to get more colds and flus. I, I don't know. Well, it looks like, it looks like just reading this over scanning. It says that, like you said, already about the gut microbiome. So it probably just affects with all the good bacteria that's in your, in your body. Right. And it just either throws off the balance or almost eliminates them. And then that's probably where the immune system is probably affected. So that might be where they, they measured it. So it right. probably is by a bunch of poop tests or poop something. Poop tests. Yeah. All right. So number two, it feeds cancer. Now, yes. I heard that the, what is it? The cancer cells can eat the same thing as something other or something along those lines. I can't remember. I don't know. Don't just. I just I know that there are two things that are shown to that cancer eats, right? I don't know about cancer eating, but like it says here that there are sugar receptors on cancer cells, certain types of cancer, right? Not all types, but certain types of cancer have more of these sugar receptor cells. So yes, I mean theoretically, eating a lot of sugar could potentially feed cancer. So it makes it worse, or <laughs> yes. maybe multiplies them. I yes. Don't know. Yeah. So. One of the things that has been shown in certain cancers, and I can't remember the exact, I don't know if it's breast cancer or prostate or, you know, some of those, but um, reducing sugar or eliminating sugar has been shown to uh, improve the odds of survival and remission, um, as well as doing things like fasting oh, okay. can improve survival and remission. Well, that's what the, the autophagy I'm assuming, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. So it's, it's cellular autophagy. And also basically when you are, when you're fasting, you're not, you're not feeding anything. Right. Right. So. Exactly. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Um, don't eat cookies if you have cancer. I guess, <laughs> right. I guess is what we're saying. So number three, it says causes premature aging. So we all know Kelly is about seventy five. She hasn't eaten yes. sugar. See, for right? I, I, years. I haven't eaten great. sugar. So right, I, I'm looking pretty, <laughs> pretty awesome. Well, yeah. I so if it causes premature aging, what 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 are your take on that? Because I mean, how are you gonna you gonna how are you gonna study that? It's gonna have to be a long study. It's going to be 20 years probably. That's true. And and I think, uh, once again, I think there's a lot of confounding factors because people who tend to eat a lot of sugar eat a lot of junk food in general. And so... It's probably just, all of those things, like yeah. your, your body's not getting enough of the vitamins, minerals, and all of these micros that it needs. It's not getting probably enough protein. All of these things that are the building blocks of healthy skin and joints and cells... And so, you know, is it is it the sugar or is it this whole host of factors when you're just eating a lot of junk food that contains sugar? I would so, almost say it's just you're not getting the stuff you need. I think it's a little bit of everything. Yeah. I don't think it's I think I think sometimes we're we're over vilifying a, a singular thing. Well, just like that the first podcast we did, eggs can kill you. Right. Obviously, they can't. Right. And this is probably the same, you know, right. death by sugar is really catchy. You look at it you're like, what? Exactly. Oh my gosh. 
It's going to get people to read this. Yeah, and it probably does cause premature aging, but just by just not getting the the stuff you need. Exactly. And that makes sense. Just like if you don't drink enough water, you also look like crap too. Right. So you ever see those like 30-day cleanse water things where they drink a gallon and they look way better? Yes. So, I mean, it's probably the same concept. And, and, And again, when I've had, when I've done sugar detoxes with people, they will notice a change in their skin. But when you eliminate sugar by default you're going to end up eating healthier stuff, right? Right, right. Because what are you going to eat? Well, you're yeah, going to you're... have to eat unprocessed stuff because yeah. all the processed <laughs> stuff contains sugar. See, that's why keto is the way because you can't eat processed stuff. <laughs> well, you can't. I mean, I like, don't know. Does bacon really help your skin health? I don't know. I don't eat that much. I only eat like four pa- four pieces of bake turkey bacon anyways. But I mean, I'm not like crazy on bacon. I'd rather eat like a steak. Oh yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. totally. If I, could eat, if I could eat a steak every day, I'd be great. But I, they're just too expensive. All right, I see the next one here is creates an addiction, and we already talked about that. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get on my soapbox again about okay. the addiction thing. No so. addiction thing. All Correct. right, causes inflammation. Now we, you, we did mention that it does. Yes. Um, I mean, if you. If you follow sports or anything like that, Tom Brady has a TB12 and he talks about certain foods he doesn't eat and whatever and because it causes inflammation. So I totally agree with this that it does. Right. I feel I felt way better on keto than I do on anything else just because I res- restrict the carb intake and mm-hmm. I think I, and I don't my, my joints don't hurt. I mean they never really have, but I mean it also inflames everything else, I think. Right. No, yeah. I, I, I would agree. I notice a difference in how I feel, um, how my joints feel, uh, how bloated I am if I'm eating too much carbohydrates, like especially the, the processed stuff yeah. and too much sugar. Um, but again, it even says here causes inflammation and right in there it says, you know, the sugar, but also the lack of proper nutrients to fuel healthy cells. I mean, you know, again, it's both of those things. So it's not just the sugar. It's the fact that pe- so many people are replacing anything healthy with, with all sugar. I mean, right. if you look at processed foods, what is it? It's mostly sugar. Well, it's mostly crap. I mean, yeah, sugar and carbs and just crap. like you go to Mc- McDonald's, you can't, I think there's only like one thing you can eat on there. That's like decent. It's like they're, uh, like chicken wrap thing, and that's like the best thing. Or a, like, I don't even trust their salads. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't want to eat their salads. Well, but. it's so funny. I think like the one of the worst things. Um, you know, Chipotle is tend to tends to be known as like a healthier. They have a lot. Fast there's food. a lot of sugar in that. But there's the, a lot of carbs in that. Their salad is like the worst thing on the menu because their dressing is just. Oh, I don't get it. It's like yeah, I, I've I, never gotten their salad because the. the well, dressing you can is, get their salad without the dressing. Like well, they right. have it all cut up because I can. usually do like a salad and then I do like my meat and all whatever else. But I don't get their dress. I don't. You don't need the dressing if you have a pound of cream cheese and. and <laughs> Cream. And, sour and cream. guacamole. And guacamole. Oh, man. I'm kind of hungry right now, so that's well, good really for good. you. I can't eat for another eight hours. So. Oh. <laughs> so nice. All right. So sugar makes you fat. Mm. Well, Kelly's kind of like, what? I don't know. She, she's looking on into space. I don't know. I, I think, I think anything in excess, I think anything in excess uh, can, can, can make you fat or can make you sick. Yeah, but it probably doesn't help that with all the sugars, all the processed foods. So right. it's going to obviously not help. That right. situation. Sugar can definitely, you know, if it, it spikes your insulin. So if you're eating a lot of sugary foods by themselves without any sort of like buffer, and when I say buffer, I mean if you're eating those things without fats and proteins to buffer your insulin response, when your insulin goes up, that is the hormone that tells your body to store. So right. any calories you eat are going to be stored more more often as well, fat. Well, yeah, and it also affects insulin insulin sensitivity right. and stuff. So right. So sugar can absolutely cause you to gain weight faster than other things. But again, it's it's I don't think it's just the sugar. And and I, I believe that we have a, a cultural problem um, because of our fast paced lifestyles are forcing us to eat more packaged foods and yeah. convenience foods. And I run into this time and again with people who are running around like chickens with their head heads cut off mm-hmm. and they have no choice but to 
rely on those foods. Well, it's not like there's a healthy fast food place besides like Chipotle. Right. If you were to kind of call that fast food. Well, it's pretty fast. And you still have to be careful. Yeah. You know, I, you know, you you really shouldn't be eating the whole uh, the whole burrito bowl. Or bowl whatever, yeah. You know, I oh, mean, you used to see but mine. I do. I mean, mine when I was go a there. double wrap. Oh. It was literally, it was literally oh, like God. this big. <laughs> It's disgusting. I saw right. I saw a bodybuilder do it online. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try this. Man. I'm like, hey, can I get this double wrapped? And they're like, yeah, sure. And it's like twice the size. And I'm like, oh, I'm doing this every time. Aren't those wraps because they're so big? I mean, don't they have like 300 calories per? Oh yeah. Tortilla. Yeah. Oh, it's bad. It's crazy. Like I haven't done that for probably five years, but I mean, it's just the amount. Right. The amount of food and right. the amount of calories you're getting from one thing. All right, so we're not. Well, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. We're, we covered sugar. Don't eat it. <laughs> Tolerate or do right. Just you know, <laughs> be it, sensible. It, you're allowed to have it, but yeah. you know, start to consider like, hey, you know, when I eat this stuff, how does it make me feel? And and over time, just asking yourself those types of questions and and getting in touch with how those things make you feel. That sometimes that's enough to say. Like, honestly, like, you know, you know, I talk about donuts all the time, right? Yeah. I love donuts. I, I had a feeling you're going to bring it up. So. Yes. But here's the thing. Donuts make me feel crappy and I'm hungry within like an hour or two of eating a donut. And I don't like to feel that way. So most of the time I am choosing to fuel my body with things that are going to make it feel good. Right. So, so that's think how I think twice it. about Eating all your kids' Halloween candy. Right, right. <laughs> As the parents do. Good luck. After they go to sleep, <laughs> they're just eating it all. All right, so you guys know this is the Initiative Project podcast. Death by sugar apparently is terrible for you, but obviously. Right. Not all the time. Mm-hmm. But, anyways, we will see you next time. If you have any questions, please let us know. Hey, everyone, this is TJ and Kelly with the Initiative Project Podcast. If you like what you heard, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions you'd like us to cover, please email us at initiativepodcast at gmail.com. See you next time.